day everyone. I am Eve Christine Joy S. Ohel and I am one of the reporters for this topic. And the second social issues was displacement crisis. Displacement crisis Displacement crisis refers to a large number of people from all over the world who are forced to leave from their homes due to violence and internal conflict. So, displacement crisis are those people nga, who are forced nga muhawa sa ilang lugar because of conflict like gira and or natural disasters. Describe situation in which internal displayed persons or IDPs leave their homes to escape political violence. The term displacement crisis is more accurate than refu refugee crisis. So the differences of refugees and IDPs is refugees are forced to leave country they live in and cross the borders, where IDPs are people who forced to leave but stay inside the country. So naara sila sa places nga layo sa conflict areas inside the country. Like for example, tong nahitabo sa Marawi. Ang mga IDPs is naara sa karatig places nga dili layo kaayo, pero dili po dool sa main conflict. Ug some IDPs pud no mas gusto magstay close sa ilang panimalay kay naghope sila nga mo better ra ang situation. Mao nang kasagaran IDPs is na stuck sa conflicted areas. Um, in this graph makita nato na highlighted diri nga ang Mindanao is more on displaced people. Um, in February to May 2020 around 47,000 conflict-related displacement were recorded, including 3,500 in May alone. In comparison, only around 3,130 conflict-related displacement were recorded in the four months prior to the election campaign. Election-related violence drove around 90% of conflict-related displacement in May. Almost of this displacement occurred in Maguindanao province. And there are 15 people died from election-related violence in Mindanao during the campaign period and on election day. Um, according to MSWD report also, as of May 2022, more, there are more than 3,300 people were displaced in Maguindanao province due to armed conflict. More and there are more than 1,200 pe people remain displaced since, ma since March 2021 due to armed conflict between, between AFP and BIFF. Um, the siege of Marawi City, um, I mean, there are 400,000 400, people in Marawi City nga na displaced nearby towns and left houses left houses. Although reconstruction is taking place, there are around 16,000 IDPs are still unable to return after four years because of the destructions. Now let's move forward to sociological theories. First, the structural functionalism. The instructionalist perspective, education is employed in explaining the basis of the need of the internally displaced persons being investigated. Education builds human capacity that develop individuals, institutions, and economies. Educating the IDPs is a process of human resources development for individual and na national development. The young IDPs can positively impact society, now and in future, through education. This must have informed that statement by President Buhari in 2015 that, children, that the children of school age displaced by insurgency would not be denied education. So, sa instructional functionalists, IDPs should have enough education or should prioritize education for them to be able to function well in the society. Even if most Filipino IDPs, children are naara sa evacuation center. 
but for them because of not enough resources and services given by the government to them, IDPs believe that surviving in life is important than education. Munang daghan gapon ang poor displaced persons in the world. Now, in conflict theory, conflict because of comp competition among groups for limited resources. Displaced people are, are unable to get enough capital to start all over again. They tend to wallow in poverty. This is why many displaced people and would-be refugees fall prey to human trafficking schemes. Refugees, asylum seekers, and displaced people are in desperate situation and, be, and may be more likely to take chances and risk in order to find employment. So, sa conflict theory, because displaced pe people are poor and vulnerable, and there is a limited resources, so mo take risk gadyod sila sa human trafficking in order to survive and find employment. Even if mabilang sila sa forced labor or other work of human trafficking and madominate sila sa powerful people is wala sila yung mahimo. Kay, just like I said, the government have limited resources and services and for IDPs, people kana lang ang pat nga ilang mabalan to survive in life. Now, in symbolic interactionism, um, in symbolic interaction perspective, the ver vulnerability influence how the family bears the chronic conditions. The common element between symbolic interactionism and the concept of vulnerability of the family is interactions. Symbolic interactions hold that all sim hold that hold that all hold that all basic concepts arise from interactions, which is developed in social actions and and social actions and and is and is symbolic when the action of each individual has meaning for the one who created the action and for the one who received it. And individuals have the auto autonomy to do what they want, defining their choices and directions, acting in accordance with how they define the situation. So that is symbolic interactionism. Now, let's proceed to spexig analysis. Um, in social, IDPs who move in from close families, relative, and friends have strong bond with each other. With each other. In social, it is common for us Filipino na kung naay problem ang atong pamilya or and friends is ato yung tabangan. No matter what the circumstances, no more nang mas strong ang atong band sa ila. And in political, political lens, oh, I mean in social, IDPs who, show, who sought refuge in government evacuation center compete each other in resources and basic needs instead of helping as whole in order to survive. Now, in political lens, internally displaced persons are often stripped of the opportunities to participate in government on a local and national basis. Political participation by the internally displaced people may be important also to ensure legit legitimacy of both the election and the government form as a result, as well as a long-term stability of the country concerned. So, in political, makita nato nga, there is, uh, I mean, in political, the right to participate in government affairs for IDPs can make their own situation much better. Mas matunan sila og pansin, og madungangan ang services and resources if they are actively participating political affairs. Now, in economic, um, economic growth is often stunted in these communities, which also suffer from an uh, insecurity caused by conflict. Because of this, they have limited access to income opportunities and at times basic services too. Um, in the Philippines, community suffers from effects of 
arm conflict so kasagaran sa mga remote areas and flung, far flung areas struggle with poverty and daily life is a challenge now in culture culture and spiritual lens islam embraces people at different races national nationalities and ethnicities displaced person in the migration process and the possible loss of, of their unique culture language and lifestyle have aroused great concerns so in culture kasagaran ni may experience sa mga muslim people they have unique culture and belief for instance they do not eat pork but because of kapubrihon and daglisod sila to meet their basic needs some muslims do not mind their culture and and belief as long as they can survive in the conflict situation <clears throat> and but one culture nga dili mawala sa mga muslim is ang pagiging spiritual muslim believes that speaking speaking of recite that speaking of reciting good verse in islamic rules reciting allahu akbar is one of the most important things for muslims allahu akbar means that allah is the greatest so that the more you recite the more you will be closer to allah <clears throat> so in spiritual lens muslims believe that if you have strong faith faith to Allah, you will be rewarded. Ugdili kanya pasagdan. So, IDP Muslims are religious and have strong faith, faith to Allah, no matter what what circumstances they faces. Now, on gender. Now, on environmental, rather. Um. Displaced civilians living inside evacuation centers are at the higher risk of contracting the disease due to inaccurate shelter conditions. So, in environment, IDPs in their environment have issues in terms of their health, health, especially sa mga displaced people nga nagpuyo sa evacuation center, um, wala sila access to clean water. Isa po sa concern sa evacuation center is ang sanitation. Naaray mga limited number of toilets causing them to use rivers and swamps which could risk their health. And displaced persons are prone to rape, abuse, discrimination, and human trafficking. Um, prone gadyod ang mga prob- prone gadyod sa mga problem labi na ang IDPs now vulnerable especially to women and children just like i said in conflict theory dali ra sila man, ma manipulate sa mga traffickers especially if tagaan sila og false promises of well paying job now in gender women are twice disadvantaged than men in conflict places they often suffer greater challenges in the labor market of their host community than displaced men. Displaced women and girls are also higher risk of sexual and gender-based violence. And girls are less likely than boys to continue their education and displacement. Now in boys, men, men and boys are also face particular challenges in internal displacement, such as higher risk of forced recruitment by armed groups or criminal gangs. In many societies, they are considered as the main breadwinners in their families and can be complained and engaged in dangerous income generating activities. So, so, women in displaced communities are the most vulnerable vulnerable person and suffering mostly to human trafficking. And human trafficking while boys are more often forced into child labor than their non-displaced peer. Now, let's proceed to programs and services. The programs and services. The Philippines has no laws relating specially, specifically to IDPs. Instead, legal guidelines for the state's response in cases of displacement 
are based on the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010. So, Philippine has no law especially to IDPs. Instead, legal guidelines for the state state's response in cases of displacement basira sa Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act. Kahit tungod walay law speci specifically sa IDPs o nakabase ra sa P PDRRMA na ay conflict. So, ang PDRRMA na ay regulation nga dili pwede ibalig yang ilang relief goods in exchange for cash. Pero by the monitoring of Philippine Commission on Human Rights shows that other than relief goods is walay wala na meet ang ilang other needs sa mga IDPs. This contravenes firm minimum standards nga dapat ang IDPs should allow to sell, sell their goods in exchange for basic necessities and cash. Now, in Republic Act 111188 entitled the Act Providing for the Special Protection of Children in Situation of armed conflict and providing penalties for violations. So, kaninga ak kay nag strengthen sa protection mechanism for children involving affected and displaced by armed conflict situation. So, kaninga law is more on monitoring, reporting, and response system on child rights violation. Kay we all know nga child and women are vulnerable to that places. The last is implementation of United and United Nation and Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF action plan to address the recruitment and use of children in con armed conflict. So in December 4, 2017, kanisya nga joint action plan sa UN and MILF dako nga tabang para ma prevent ang recruitment of children. In fact, sa UN and MILF work together resulting in disengagement of 1,869 children. So, ang mga disengagement children have the rights and can access to the and can access to the psychosocial support and other protection, social welfare, education, and health services supported by government and development development partners. So, sa mga times sa uh, armed conflict na na mga services nga na implement na sa government or na implement na sa mga just like sa in sa International Committee of the Red Cross or ICRC strive to protect and assist people who are affected by armed conflict. In Manila, the ICRC support supported expansion of the Batangas Medical Center tuberculosis lab and expected to ramp up the detention of the disease and other treatment of BDLs. In Visayas, um, decimation of ICRC's work to ensure civilians are protected during conflict was made with the Armed Force of the Philippines. Um, in Iligan, which is in Mindanao, there are 88 families of missing persons participated in the second cycle of the accompaniment program sessions. The majority of the families were also given financial assistance through the microeconomic initiative. Um, in Butuan City, two hospitals of women and children protection unit were renovated by ICRC. These were the Agusan del Norte Provincial Hospital in Butuan City and Adela Shera Memorial Medical Center in Tandag, Surigal del Sur. Surigal del Sur. Um, in Davao, um, there are 193 persons with disabilities benefited from the service of Davao Jubilee Foundations an organization supported by the ICRCs. Aside from receiving mobility devices, selected beneficiaries were also given grants to establish or to continue their business ventures. And in Cotabato City, there are 139 families 
um, receive shelters, kits from the ICRC. The family's living condition also improved when the ICRC delivered delivered um, latrine kits and constructed hand pumps in their village. And lastly, in Davao City, the PRC but Bacona Bus and initiative supported by ICRC vaccinated hundreds of factory workers and community members in Zamboanga City. Meanwhile, the PRC Zamboanga COVID-19 Vaccination Center has administered more than 49,000 doses as of June 2022.